Uh, so this is a story that has touched all of our hearts. In the week or so since our coverage of 80-year-old Paul Harvey and the BBC's Philharmonic's recording of his four-note song, the track has reached the top of the Amazon and iTunes charts. It's been wonderful to watch, isn't it? Our inbox has been flooded with messages of support uh, for the former music teacher who is now living with dementia. Well, now, Breakfast Graham Satchel has been to catch up with one viewer who has a very <laughs> special surprise for Paul. Have a look. It's been quite a week for 80-year-old Paul Harvey. His improvised tune, Four Notes, has been top of various download charts and touched people around the world. This music makes me so emotional and I hope everyone buys it to raise money for donation charities. Love to you, Paul. Oh, I wish you well. Sweet. Paul and Nick have been overwhelmed by the public response. I just think, wow, you know, great stuff. I, I, I love it, but it, it's, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm riding the bucking bronco and just enjoying it. It's been incredible. Um, I've been so overwhelmed by it. It's, it's, it's been like a, a, a tsunami of, of love for Dad. Yesterday I received in the post a, a letter from someone I've, I've never met before with a £100 donation to one of the charities. Honestly, it has been amazing and I've been blown away by it. My wife, Mary, and I were lying in bed watching BBC Breakfast and um, all the doom and gloom that comes from the news these days. And um, this piece came on and it was like, it was like something so special. Sir Tom Hunter, just one viewer deeply moved by Paul's story. Sir Tom is an entrepreneur who set up his first business selling trainers from the back of a van with a £5,000 loan from his dad. So my dad was and is my hero. It really resonated with myself because I lost both my mum and my dad to um, Alzheimer's. To Tom's other great influence, the philanthropist Andrew Carnegie. We decided we were not going to be the richest people in the graveyard. And um, really guided by Andrew Carnegie, who said you should do something with your money while you're still alive. Time for one more surprise. So hi, Paul and Nick. Hello. Um, we were so moved, my wife and I, when we saw your wonderful piece on BBC Breakfast. And um, in a time where people are searching for good news, you lit up the screen um, with, first of all, the relationship between the father and the son, and then the relationship with music. So my wife, Marion, and I would like to help you um, by donating a million pounds from the Hunter Foundation to help put a light into trying to release people from Alzheimer's. We really believe music is a key. We really believe you're onto something and we really want to help. Wow. So in a time when we're all searching, in this confusing time, some things never change. And the wow. things that never change are a father's love for his son and a son's love for his father. Oh, thank you. So please, take good care. I will. Thank you so much. Wow. I thank don't you. know what to say. Thank you. Amazing. What a team, eh, Dad? <laughs> you and me. Take on the world. <laughs> That is fantastic. It really is. Yes. Oh dear. I didn't think I could be moved more, more, much more now, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs>
Should we split that between the two children? No. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I thought you were going to say split it between you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Yes. Oh, you'll split it between the two charities. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> So a million pounds split between the Alzheimer's Society and Music for Dementia. A remarkable moment for both Nick and Paul. And for all this to happen, and I'm in my flipping 80s, that's pretty good, I think that is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm happy with that. You know, yeah. I, just, just think what you'll achieve. You'll, 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 just think what you'll achieve in your nineties. Oh, God, help us! <laughs> <laughs> Sensational. Well, I, I, I know that two people were crying. Shall we introduce them? <laughs> I'm watching that film where Arlene Phillips, the former Strictly Come Dancing judge who's an ambassador for the Alzheimer's Society, and also Grace Meadows, the programme <laughs> director of Music for Dementia. Uh, thank you both so much Good for joining morning. us. And I know we've surprised you with that news. So a £1 million donation uh, shared between your two charities, and it's right set you off, hasn't it? Uh, Grace, are you... Uh, well, we'll come to you. We'll come to you in a minute, Grace, because I know that you've been in tears. Um, Arlene, what's your response? My makeup's run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apart from apart from your makeup running, what's your response to that? Um, it's so deeply moving. Um, it, it's hard to believe. Um, both those charities need all the money they can, of course, like every charity um, in lockdown. Um, so much of the money they need hasn't been there. So this is incredible. But also this music, this, this music that uh, swoops and soars right into your heart and soul is so very, very precious because everyone at the moment, and again, we're going into lockdown, um, Many, many people who have dementia, Alzheimer's, can't be with their families as much as they need to be. And then you hear this music and everything you hold inside, you stay kind of tight and I'll get on with it. And it, it's that, that spirit is whatever happens, I, I have to be OK. That music hits you and you release all the tears that, that are locked inside. And in many ways, it's probably for the good. It's probably to say... It's okay that we don't all feel our best. And it's okay to want people and feel so much for families that have someone with dementia to say, I want to need to be with them. My heart is crying for contact. And that's understandable. And this music kind of says it all. Um, let's go to Grace Meadows, uh, Music for Dementia. So half of that million pounds goes to your charity. And I, I mean, my heart goes out to you because we, we surprised you with that. And Dan and I were watching your reaction and you were, uh, you're kind of a bit overwhelmed, aren't you? It's been extraordinary. And um, listening to, to Paul and Nick in that video, and the roller coaster of the week. I can't believe what they've been through. And then for this to be one of the many results that has come about because of his beautiful, naturally gifted musicality and their love for each other is just the most extraordinary thing. And um, for me, I'm already, my mind's racing of wonderful ways in which we can support our musical workforce to really support people living with dementia and those who care for them because so many services haven't been able to, to happen over the past six, seven months. And now more than ever, as Arlene has said, that we need music in our lives. And this really speaks to the power of music. I, I couldn't agree more with everything that Arlene so eloquently and beautifully said. But for me, this is all about relationships. Music is people. People are all about relationships. So this is just extraordinary. And I'm so in, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> and we're so, at Music for Dementia, so incredibly grateful to Tom and his generosity. 
I was going to ask you about that, Grace, because, you know, that's, that's one viewer who's in a really privileged position. And as he said, like so many of us have been so touched by what we've seen from Paul and from Nick and the reaction of many people getting that song to number one. And now he's able to, because of what he's been through himself, donate that one million pounds split between your two charities, which will make such a huge difference, Grace. Oh, a huge difference. We know that so many organisations are concerned about having to, to close or, or no longer offer their services. And actually, these services are really vital. And we know that music is so vital. Paul's told this incredible story. In fact, Nick and I were talking in the week about how, you know, we didn't realise how stratospheric this would go. Um, but it I, th I think what it also speaks to is that music touches all of us. As Arlene was saying, you, you, we don't need to be as musically gifted as as Paul, but um, we can all feel the impact of it. And there are lots of people out there who help you can, to do that. You know, the music therapists, the music practitioners, the wonderful performers and entertainers. And we need to have them back in our care settings so that everyone can feel the impact of music. Um, and Arlene, you're ambassador for the Alzheimer's Society. I mean, this kind of thing also raises the profile, doesn't it, in, in many ways, which I presume is helpful. It's enormously helpful. They have a group singing for the brain, which many people might have seen on television, and they have their Christmas carol concert um, in December on the 17th, which is a fundraiser that everyone is invited to watch. And it's about music. It's about the help that they give to people with dementia yeah. and, and singing every single week. And again, it all needs funding. So this and the generosity is incredible. And I hope it will inspire people because we all know that Alzheimer's is increasing more and more and more. And one in three people in the world will get Alzheimer's. And the more funding, the more funding that goes into music, helping people contact with the music they listen to in their era, the memory somehow is there. People can sing along with songs from their youth or from a time when they, they listen to music or dance to music. It's the same with dance, people remember. And this funding will help enormously and I hope inspire others to realise how important it is. It's lovely to hear you both uh, so happy this morning, um, you know, after, after watching that and hearing about the donation. I wanted to ask you, Grace, as well. And many people will be looking at the front page of the papers this morning, lots of stories about Sir Bobby Charlton. Um, his wife says she's happy for him to uh, be made public, that he is... Um, uh, living with dementia at the moment as well. And, and she said she feels that it could help others with the condition. I wonder what sort of impact, Grace, that might have. I think somebody as, uh, as significant as Sir Bobby um, announcing that he has dementia is really important because it means that there's still a lot of stigma around dementia and it means that people are going to be able to start feeling as though they can talk about it more um, and and be able to, to have conversations and get the help that they need. We know there's an awful lot of people out there who have dementia who, for whatever reason it might be, don't feel that they can ask for help or feel that they could even tell people about the fact that they know that something isn't quite right. So I think having significant figures such as him to tell their stories, a bit like Paul has. Telling their stories encourages others to reach out, have conversations about how important it is to get help. At, the t at this time when it is difficult to get to services, we'd really encourage you to use services such as the Alzheimer's Society, phone their helpline, and try and speak to your GP, but get the help that you need. It's so important. The sooner you can get help, the, the better it will be for you. Thank you so much for that, Grace, and uh, Arlene as well. And we're sorry that we sort of surprised sorry to you today. Sorry to make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Inspiring. Um, Paul is just, just incredible. Everyone needs a Paul in their lives to teach them, to educate yeah. them, because he has done so much. If you look back at the films from his students, mm. he has done yeah. so much, and it makes you realise... A good teacher is everything. Um, thank you both very much indeed um, for that. And uh, I respect you probably weren't alone in that. Thank you, of course, as well to Sir Tom Hunter for being in touch, for what his donation, for everybody else um, who has so generously donated as well. Thank
Thank you so much. I think we need to apologise as well, Louise. There's a lot of people saying, where was the tissue warning? I was not ready for this at <laughs> quarter past eight on a Monday morning. Oh. We promised you a lift and, you know, the, the story of Paul and Nick and the, the way that it's just sort of mushroomed um, out from initially coming on this programme and then the wonderful work at the BBC Philharmonic as well. I don't know about you, Louise, I love the way that Nick looks at his dad when Paul is talking. It, I, I, I can't not watch it without just being in floods of tears. It's amazing. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's absolutely lovely. Uh, 